Year 13, we are back to school. I imagine there were quite a few mixed feelings about this. You're probably feeling quite, maybe quite emotional. This is your last year at school, a school you've potentially been at since you were 11. This could be like happy feelings or sad feelings, or maybe you don't really know how you're feeling, but this is your last Thursday back at school. I know, this is really, really bizarre. Assuming we don't repeat and do a year 14. Um, this is your last first day back at school and this is a big year. I'm not gonna lie to you because honestly lying to you doesn't do anyone any favours. So in this video we're gonna go over um, preparing for your A-levels and we're gonna go over UCAS things. So I want you to think back to year 11. Now I know it was quite a while ago for some of you um, but we need to think of that stress you were feeling around Easter of year 11 and was it was it a good feeling? Was it a bad feeling? Were you 100% prepared? Were you not prepared at all? And what I really wanted to do is to avoid that feeling for this year. So we can do stuff now, that means by the time you get to Easter, by the time you get to your revision, you'll be less stressed about it. You will have a happier year, you will have a more relaxed year, your mental health will be better. And when we get into those exams, hopefully you'll be calm and relaxed and prepared. Now, one of the big problems with these new linear exams is that the examiners are constantly saying that when they test you on the year 12 content, that's your weak area. So, while you are doing new stuff, while you are revising year 13 stuff, you need to be revising the year 12 content as well. And at this time of year, it should probably be like 25% revising year 12 content, 25% revising year 13 content. Now I know we don't necessarily have a lot of year 13 content at the moment, but you will soon. And then 50% of your time should be doing kind of like homework, making notes on your year 13 content, going over what you've done in class, adding to your notes. As I've been saying for ages, little and often is the key with this. So if you do little bit, little bit, little bit the whole way through, that will save you having to do loads and loads and loads at the end so don't forget about that year 12 content it is important and we need to be revising it the whole way through so that by the time we get to Easter you know it really really well and you're not trying to panic revise a whole year's worth of content in a week. I imagine before some break their teachers and staff at school started talking to you about UCAS maybe you met the the dedicated UCAS advisor, a person you've probably never seen before, um, whose job it is to help you with your UCAS application forms, maybe it's your head of sixth form, maybe it's your head of year, maybe it's your form tutor that will be taking on that role. But this is quite it's quite a daunting period. There's quite a lot for you to do. You need to decide where you're going to go and what you're going to study, and then you need to write a personal statement convincing people to let you do what you want to do where you want to do it. And if you haven't started yet, don't worry, that is perfectly normal. A lot of people haven't started yet. But if you're thinking about medicine, veterinary, Oxford or Cambridge, then your deadline is the 15th of October, which is very, very soon. If you're not thinking about those things, then the deadline is the 15th of January. But a large, large chunk of people leave their UCAS applications to that two week period between Christmas and January and the places do not wait for you. As soon as the UCAS applications open, people will be getting those applications in and they will be getting offers for places. They'll be getting good offers for places, they'll be getting unconditional offers for places pretty much straight away. So if you want to be in there, if you want to be competing, if you want to be sure that you get onto the calls that you want at the university that you want, then you need to get your UCAS application in sooner rather than later. Now, if you really don't have any idea of what you want to do, don't panic. The school system you've been in at the moment, you didn't really have much choice about. Maybe you've got to pick between a couple of six on colleges, but you're kind of stuck by location, um, how far you could travel, how much you could afford to spend on buses or trains or whatever. This isn't necessarily a problem anymore because literally the world is your oyster. You can go anywhere you want to and do nearly anything that you want. If you are not sure where to start, then I've got a whole load of videos and I've got a whole load of blog posts on my website to help you out. There are so many weird and wonderful things out there that you've probably never even 
thought of doing a degree in these things um, because the A-levels weren't available to you and it's not just degrees that are out there, there are apprenticeships, there are degree apprenticeships where you can work and then study and then work and then study and other people pay for your university degree if you're doing a degree apprenticeship. There are lots and lots of options out there and I think sometimes the biggest hurdle to finding these options is actually starting and knowing where to look because there are so many things out there that you probably don't know even existed. Um, this is a really, really exciting year. Lots and lots of things are going to be happening for you. And I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way.